Greetings and welcome to episode 6 of the Math Olympiad Lecture Series. Today we will be looking into the topic of certs. The objective of this lesson would be for students to be able to simplify certs using the law of certs, conjugate certs, and to examine problems involving certs embedded within another cert. Certs are irrational roots of integers. For the purpose of this video, we will focus only on square roots. There are three laws of certs. These rules are quite self-explanatory and are special cases derived from the laws of indices covered in the previous lecture. Where the laws come in more useful are in the simplification of certs. Take case 1, where we see root of 80. We should try to simplify it so as to make problems easier. This is done by breaking 80 up, looking particularly for factors that are square numbers. In this case, 80 is equal to 16 times 5, so root 80 is equal to root 16 times root of 5, giving us 4 root 5. In case 2, we have a fraction where the denominator consists of a third. We can multiply the numerator and denominator by that third in order to rationalize the denominator. In case 3, the denominator consists of 2 plus root of 3. How we can rationalize the denominator is to multiply 2 minus root 3 to both the numerator and the denominator. This will give us 2 squared minus root 3 squared in the denominator, which turns out to be 1. In case 4, we have two different certs in the denominator, root of 5 minus root of 2. In this case, we multiply root of 5 plus root of 2 to both the numerator and the denominator to rationalize the denominator. These terms highlighted in red are known as conjugate certs. The big idea behind them is the algebraic concept that a plus b times a minus b is equal to a squared minus b squared. Another useful thing to remember for competitions is the decimal estimates for some common certs. I have two ways of memorizing these values. For Mandarin speakers, a technique is known as xiang ying zi. These are Chinese words that sound similar to the numbers pronounced in Chinese. For English speakers, there is a system known as the phonetic pack system. I'm going to leave some links in the info section where you can learn more about this method. But the general gist is that you encode the numerical digits into phonetic sounds and you form weird phrases for easy recall. Let's now look at question 1. Can you evaluate 1 over root 1 plus root 2, plus 1 over root 2 plus root 3, plus 1 over root 3 plus root 4, all the way to 1 over root 99 plus root 100? Pause the video here to give this question a good try. The trick to this problem is to first rationalize the denominators for these certs by multiplying both the numerator and the denominator with the conjugate cert. You will start seeing a pattern as you simplify these certs. When you lay out all the terms in two columns, what you will notice is that most of these terms will cancel out. Only root of 100 and root of 1 is left over, and these can be evaluated to give you 9. So did you get the answer? Let's look at the next question. Evaluate square root of 17 plus 12 root 2 plus square root of 17 minus 12 root 2. Pause the video here to give this question a good try. The trick that we employ here is to assume that 17 plus 12 root 2 can be expressed as the square of a third expression. We let 17 plus 12 root 2 equals to a plus b root 2 squared. 
After removing the big square root from both sides, we can expand the right-hand side to give us a square plus 2b square plus 2ab root 2. Now we can start to compare the rational and irrational terms on both sides. The rational terms that I've highlighted in red give us the equation that 17 is equal to a square plus 2b square. Comparing the irrational terms, we see that ab is equal to 6. There are two approaches from this point forward. The standard method is to solve the simultaneous equation using substitution. It is possible to get four different sets of answers for a and b, but since I'm gunning towards speed, I'll just zoom towards a equals to 3 and b equals to 2 as my final answer. Viewers at home are to consider the other three alternatives, a equals to negative 3 and a equals to plus or minus 2 root 2, highlighted in red. More importantly is that I can simplify 17 plus 12 root 2 as 3 plus 2 root 2. And using a similar argument, the root of 17 minus 12 root 2 can be simplified as 3 minus 2 root 2. It is important that since we are taking the positive root, that 3 minus 2 root 2 is positive. So you can check this using the decimal estimates that I've highlighted in the previous part of the lecture. Finally, putting the two terms together, the root 2s will cancel each other out and you will get 6. The alternative is to just guess and check. Knowing that a times b gives you 6, you could test for a equals to 1, b equals to 6, a equals to 2, b equals to 3, and so on. You substitute these values of a and b into equation 1, and you see that only a equals to 3 and b equals to 2 will give you 17. The subsequent steps will be exactly the same as the simultaneous equation. Now, while this looks like a faster method, I would like to caveat that this method is not guaranteed to work. There is an assumption that a and b here are integer values, which may not always be the case. Hence, the answer is 6. Did you get it? Here are today's extension problems. Solutions to Lecture 5's problems have been updated into the info section of the previous video. We have come to the end of episode 6. I would like to thank all my subscribers for supporting this channel. Do continue to like the videos and subscribe to the channel for more content on mathematical problem solving. In the next video, we will be taking a break from arithmetic and to begin on our series on algebra, starting from problems involving quadratics. Thank you and have a good day of learning.